Out to center. This is Kranz. It's way back. It is gone. Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today we have an awesome episode. It's with a good friend of mine, Bryant Ferrati. He is currently an athletic trainer with the University of Portland, helping with different sports. He has a background in athletic training, helping with various minor league teams. This guy ran a 100 mile ultra marathon last year. He just finished up crushing the Eugene Marathon. He's a total badass and this is an awesome conversation. Talking through both of our journeys with, with starting our podcast, with mindset, with just figuring out life and really everything in between. Make sure to go check out Bryant across social media platforms at Bryant Ferrati and make sure to sign up for his newsletter, The Daily Deposit. This podcast is sponsored by Black Label Supplements. Make sure to check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your order. They've got everything from pre-workout, post-workout, protein, creatine, branch chain amino acids. They got it all. They're a third-party tested, athlete-approved supplement company. I'm actually having the owner of the company, Troy Bell, on the podcast coming up, so make sure to check that out. And make sure to check out Baseballism, the official off-field brand of baseball. I'm wearing their gear all the time. They've got some really cool Mariner stuff. The hat on the wall there is is a Baseballism product. Make sure to check out Baseballism.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your order. And as always, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, make sure to reach out to myself, the Couch GM, to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. I've been in residential mortgage lending since I graduated college eight years ago. My team can assist in all 50 states. So if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, again, reach out to myself. My contact information will be in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, we're live. We're in it. The Couch GM, Connor's in the house. Uh, it's been a big theme for the podcast recently of uh, doing a lot of joint podcasts, just connecting with people who are putting a ton of energy and, and investing in the craft of, of building out their podcast. So we got another one, a collab where we can go back and forth on both of us building out our passion project. But dude, thanks for being here. I'm pumped. I even got my Mariners sweatshirt rolling. So yeah, thanks for ready. having me. I'm, I'm pumped yeah. to be on your podcast. It's been cool to see what you're doing. And then, you know, with our conversations off air, getting to know each other a bit with your background, with my background, with baseball, the the overlaps that we have and kind of the, the journeys that we're both on, you know, although we might have different goals there, you know, it's a lot in the same. So I'm excited to have this conversation and see where it goes. Yeah. Cause I uh, do. I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, Colin like got us in right. touch and shout out to uh, a Colin with the seats of success pod um, being able to connect us. And it's sick. Just like maybe being based out of Portland and you're over in Vancouver. It's a uh, small it's world been cool just to meet up and yeah. Yeah. Represent this, this part of uh, South Washington and, and Oregon and uh, be able to connect over something that honestly, at times it's hard to connect with people about, you know, like you talk to your buddies or people you work with every day and you're like, oh yeah, I'm working on this podcast <laughs> or this YouTube, co like your YouTube content. Like I've, I've shared it with a lot of the baseball guys here at UP because it's like, oh, on like Bryce Miller's pitch design or um, different oh, topics liar. like that. Yeah. It, it's been cool to have someone else like that's in the arena um, working on the craft of like building out, not just like content, but like actual like deep dive into like edu I guess content is the word, but, but it, I feel like there's so much more than that, you know, like I, you're not just like, Oh, I'm posting stuff on Instagram. Yeah. And I sense. think you were kind of about to say like education and that's how I, I view it is the education piece and okay, here's Bryce Miller and he's elite at stuff. And like, here's the breakdown of the details of why he is so good and to make the average fan understand what, what the advanced, you know, person might know and to be able to educate someone from start to finish on a topic. And it's not, like you mentioned, it's not just putting out content. And that's kind of one thing is like, I'm trying to find that, you know, the, uh, um, the weight between putting out enough content to where it's informational, it's entertaining, it's all this stuff. It's not just content for content and it's mm -hmm. actually has a purpose behind it. So yeah, f finding that balance is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like when you say content, like the, like the podcast you have with some of those players, like creating content is like you setting them up with like catchy questions. So then they <laughs> say some banger one liner right. <laughs> where it's like, really, you're trying to have like deep, meaningful conversations with these, these like 18 to 22 year old freaks who got, <laughs> just got drafted. Like you had the noble Meyer podcast recently, yeah. or you're having like 
deep, meaningful conversations with, with like older MLB vets and they're sharing like incredible stories. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I always laugh because it's like content creator is just like this bucket and you're like, eh. yeah, like there's, there's a lot more like being genuine. And, yeah. Yeah. There's like, there's a lot of like being genuine and, and purpose behind that instead of just, yeah, I'm pumping out content for, for content's sake. For sure. But dude, I was wondering, um, I looked this up and I was curious, like what, what happened in the fall of 2021 to get started? Cause your, your first video on your YouTube channel is like December, 2021. Yep. And then it was like February 20 It's actually ironic. It's February 15th, 2022, which is tomorrow is February 15th, which is, which is pretty crazy. So your second video that you posted on was exactly two years ago. Okay. Oh, yeah. So my first video was like December 12th or 20th or something like that, 2021. And, uh, the, the video, so the video title, I believe was Jerry DePoto owns the Padres or something like that, <laughs> because he just made a trade with the Padres to acquire Adam Frazier, who at the time was an all-star second baseman. And I had been following the Mariners up to that point. I graduated college in 2016 and, you know, was playing, started playing in that adult league in Portland after I graduated. Go yeah, go Cougs. Yeah. And, um, yeah, following the Mariners, watching baseball and got into a serious fantasy baseball league. That's really why I wanted to start watching all of baseball, not just the Mariners, because I wanted to watch all my fantasy starting pitchers, all of their outings to see if, you know, the stats that they're putting up, if that's true to what was actually happening or if they just had a down day type thing. And so, yeah, following the Mariners, you know, they started the rebuild with that Jared Kelnick trade. And eventually they had one of the top farm systems in baseball. And it's pretty easy to see that, you know, you have a good farm system. Your major league team is going to be pretty good for the foreseeable future. So I was like, Hey, now's the time to do it. And I had thought about starting a YouTube channel. I never really knew what I had started a fitness brand out of college that I made a couple videos for, but had no real experience in making videos or market mark. I mean, I majored in finance and marketing, but actual, you know, marketing experience, it's different mm -hmm. from going to college for something, reading it from a book versus actually applying it and doing it. But um, yeah, I was looking for certain information on various players that I wasn't really finding. There was only like one other channel out there talking about the Mariners. And so I just decided to start making content on videos that I myself would want to watch. And that, that Adam Frazier trade happened. And I was like, okay, this is sweet. You know, they got an all-star second baseman from the Padres. And then looking at the history of the Padres trades with Jerry DePoto, and he's absolutely fleeced them in the past. He got like uh, Matt Brash for like nothing. He got Andres Munoz, Ty France, Luis Torrens, and Taylor Trammell for uh, uh, Aaron Nola, the catcher. It's not, no, Austin Nola. Yeah, Aaron Nola is the pitcher. Austin Nola is the catcher, his brother. He traded like Austin Nola and two relievers for Andres Munoz, Ty France, Taylor Trammell, and Luis Torrens, like these studs that are on the current team now. Yeah. And then he got Matt Brash for nothing. And then he also got a a Adam Frazier for a couple low prospects. And so, uh, you know, I, I made a kind of funny video about that and then um, posted it. And I want to say it got like 1,500 views in the first couple weeks. And so that was promising. I think my second video was like a 20 minute long, super in detail, but. If I were to go back and watch it now, I would not be able to watch it because, you know, I was so monotone and there was no music in the background and just all these things. But I think my second video was like a 20 minute video on the, the history of the lockouts. Hmm. And yeah, just educating on the history of the lockouts because they were going into a lockout with the Players Association and the owners. Um, that video did not have the same success and results. So that, yeah, I put a lot of time into that one and, you know, nothing. So it's, it, but it started the, you know, the learning process of how to create videos, learning the YouTube algorithm, all these different things. So, yeah. Did you, what was that process like of starting? Like, was it like a hard, like, like a hard thing to climb or was it kind of like a speed bump where you're like, well, I just gotta, gotta crank out these YouTube videos and I'll get better <laughs> at it. You know? I mean, yeah, like when I started, I didn't have any transitions, any like actual editing. I was just like 
putting pictures, you know, I, I talked on camera for a certain amount of time. I set my phone on a tripod. I had a uh, condenser mic that I had from starting that fitness brand initially because I knew I wanted to make YouTube videos at some point. But if you watch my video, you know, it's like my mic's here and it's like shaking while I'm talking and like all this, like, yeah, yeah it's like moving around. I have a Christmas tree in the background. It's like all this random stuff. And so I was just looking to make my first video and I knew what I was talking about with the Adam Frazier stuff in baseball. I knew that I knew what I was talking about. Now it's just a matter of putting it out there. So I don't know if I was really too concerned about it being perfect. And that's the thing is, you know, perfect is the enemy of done. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to find that point to where it's like, okay, it's 80% complete or 20% 20% effort to get you 80% complete. And then the, that last 20% takes like 80% of the time. So if you can get it 80%, 85%, that's good enough to post. It doesn't have to be hundred percent perfect. So that's cool. I asked that because something I've recently started doing, like uh, my best friend, Mike has been pushing me a lot to put my stuff on YouTube for sure. And then after we met at, uh, at Trapdoor in Vancouver, uh, the first time we got to connect, I was like, all right, I just need to, like, I really appreciated our conversation. And I was like, okay, maybe kind of like using your 80, 20 example. It's for me, I was like, okay, I don't really feel comfortable posting the whole hour long conversation because it's going to be super raw and like not cleaned up because I'm not there yet in regards to the editing. But one thing I do, one thing I can do is like three to 10 minute videos. So that's actually something I started two weeks ago. I've already posted three or four. Um, on YouTube? Just like, yeah, just like three to five minute videos. And it's like a three to five minute, like really good chunk of like a, just a three to five minute chunk on like a certain topic from like these hour and a half conversations. So I, I had one with, uh, and it was ironic, it actually full circle, full circle here. I, there was one that was about like learn by doing, and it's basically Ben Wilson. He's the host of uh, how to take over the world podcast. And he used to be the producer for my first million. And uh, he's talking about how he needs to make more YouTube content. And I'd forgot because I recorded that like a year and a half ago. And I clipped that and he's like, yeah, man, I just need to get better at YouTube. But honestly, if I just started posting, like I'd probably get better at it, which was so ironic because I was literally cutting it up to do that thing. Like I was like, okay, I need to get better at this. Yeah. So yeah, but I posted three so far, but I was just curious of, of like what that process looked like for you. Of yes. Stick with it. And then it's, and then it's like, um, you know, when I take those podcasts and I turn them into shorts, you know, there's, it's one process to get it ready for the YouTube podcast. And then when you're looking to turn it into a short, then that's like an entire different editing process because mm. you got to find the chunk. You got to cut out like all of the small gaps and, you know, pauses. You obviously have to turn it into like a vertical format on the thing. And then, you know, once it's just like straight meat, then that's when you start to, you add the background music, you add images, video of what that player is talking about. And so creating a short out of the podcast is like a separate thing. And you just got to learn as you go and, if you see something that you like from a certain video, then just kind of take note of that. And if you don't know how to do it, then look it up on YouTube, how to, to, to edit that way. And then you can just mm -hmm. add it to your next video. And like what the, what the Mariners say, it's 1%, just get 1% better every day. Just learn one new thing with editing each video and a year from now, it's going to be night and day. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, dude, that's, that's something I'm, I'm excited for this next year of like, I feel like a, like a game I can, get into or like like within myself or like a competition i can get within is like okay i'm going to refine these like 15 minute or less videos and then i can get closer to being like all right i'm posting this 90 minute pod and <laughs> i'm going to clean it up so that that's kind of that's kind of my goal i was dude with the with the push like i I've, i really loved how you'd shared this when we met up before but it's like instead of going audio only um, and you have these like different buckets, like you have player profiles where it's like a recap of like, like how the Mariners just signed Mitch Garver, which like we'll link in the show notes so people can check it out. Um, so you have like that bucket and then it's more like trending topics of like, like now it's baseball season or like the MLB just messed up all the, jer or I guess technically Nike messed up a lot of the jerseys. Yeah. Um, and then this, and then it's the podcast where you're, where you're interviewing or having a, just like a great conversation with somebody. But bringing this, bringing this back full circle to a question is 
that relationship between like Google being a search engine and YouTube being a search engine, that was like a big driver of why you chose like also video or like YouTube being the main thing versus yeah. just like audio content, correct? So I never considered I never considered in my in my head <clears throat> in my head doing audio only. It was kind of only like a YouTube or nothing else basically. Mm -hmm. And I mean, part of it, honestly, was because, you know, during the, during uh, college, my summers, I learned about passive income, investing in real estate, passive income specifically, because with YouTube, you have the ability to make money from the rep, the AdSense revenue. Right. And so, you know, I was watching Christian Guzman, Alpha Lead Athletics, like Jim Shark, Steve Cook, Jim Shark, like all, yeah. all these fitness, you know, influencers on YouTube. And dude, that guy needs like a tree. It'd be so interesting to see like the, the tree of impact. Guzman. Yeah. Just like, yeah. there's so many different content creators that are like, so not to interrupt you. I just no. like, like basically people are always like, oh yeah. Casey Neistat and him too, Tim Ferriss him. and then Guzman like, and then they're like, oh, and then I went this way and it's like not even fitness related. Like Zach Pogorov, the obsession. Yeah. He always talks about the, it's the year of obsession. And that dude's like, oh yeah. Fitness influencers. I was like, oh, I could do that, but on a different topic. So that's ironic you said him. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like he's a serial entrepreneur and like in the same sense, I'm an entrepreneur also. I see the opportunity in different businesses and the way that I'm taking things and trying to constantly think of, you know, how I can take it to the next step. And I didn't, with where I'm at and where it's going right now, I didn't necessarily see it going this way when I first started. I just wanted to start creating content about the Mariners and, you know, maybe one day I'll interview players. Everything has you know, taken off quicker than I imagined really. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm making all these connections. Things are going a certain way. Let's, let's pivot and try this out and see how this goes and go with it. Um, but yeah, part of it with YouTube was the passive income. So how can I, you know, work to, to make something that I could be making money while, while I'm sleeping. And so okay. with YouTube, you know, seeing those guys, they were making X amount of money, whatever that was one of the motivations for getting into YouTube. Um, what was the original question? Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I was just curious, like um, you'd mentioned before, it's like this relationship between Google yeah, yeah. and YouTube versus like, I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I remember putting in my notes and when you said it, it hit because it's so different than looking something up on like, right. It, there's just, there's a lot more leverage within Google search and YouTube and Google owns YouTube, correct? Yeah. So Google is the number one search engine in the world. YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. And so YouTube is not a social media, you know, mm -hmm. like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, X, those are social medias and your content that you post maybe has a shelf life of a week at most, probably a day versus YouTube. It has a shelf life of forever. Because if you make quality content, even if the topic is not trending today, or even if your subscribers are not wanting to watch a certain type of video, eventually that topic will be trending or someone will search that into Google or to YouTube. And that's where the power, like you mentioned, of the search engines really come into play. Because if you focus on making quality content, and that's where we also talked about evergreen content versus the trending topics. Mm -hmm. And there's two different things. It's like, with trending topics, if something happens, you can make a video on it and then you can ride that wave of the, the trending search on top of, you know, bigger platform or bigger channels making content about that same topic. Your video might be recommended under one of those big channels. Mm. And so if that happens, then someone goes to watch their video. Your video is also recommended here. Oh, you have a cool thumbnail and title about the top, the same topic. They click on yours and then it escalates from there. Versus like the evergreen content, which is like the player profile to where I try to have like a, like a foresight, I think is what I would say, like looking out into the future. And I know certain things about certain players or certain prospects up, up and coming. So if I make a video about this guy right now, then when he does start performing in a couple months, then he's going to become relevant. I might be one of those only videos on him at the time because no one else is talking about him. So that might allow me to be able to catch on to that traction at that point. So when making videos, it's kind of like, you know, am I going for something right now 
or am I creating a video that's kind of like a long-term yeah. play basically? Yeah. I love, I love that when you, you'd explain that to me before, because it's, it seems so counter what people would want, but you're actually like tapping into the real Mariner fans yeah. and like the real niche versus like, okay, everyone's going to be like, like, I mean, it's still sick. Like you did that on field interview with Julio, which is insane, <laughs> but, but it's like most Mariners fans are like, oh, like, wow, you talked to Julio or you talked to J-Rod, like that's dope. But like the real niche Mariner fans who are probably going to watch like every single one of your videos is you being like, oh, we, like I interviewed like the first round draft pick from the past few years right. of the draft. And like, hey, we hope that this guy is in double A next year and we hope he makes it to the bigs in the next three or four. And that it almost like, you're creating more leverage and like you're getting the flywheel turning on maybe a player who like, yeah, it's his flywheel's going because like he was a first round draft pick, but not as much as like the guys who are on the 25 man roster. Right. Which I, I think is so cool. It's like you're building that foundation out really, really wide and like creating a lot of like back end momentum. Yeah, for sure. And like I've kind of said to other people, I've gone, <clears throat> gone super deep into the Mariners niche. And so now this year, I'm going to try to go wide and I'm still going to make all the same content that I was on Mariners training topics and player profiles, but I also want to make as many videos as I can on trending topics within baseball, because mm -hmm. if I could start to widen the net, then, you know, get fans from other teams. And it's funny because even on the Mariners videos that I make, there's always people that are commenting saying, Hey, I'm a Dodgers fan, but I think so-and-so, or I'm an Astros fan screw you guys or whatever, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, so they got to throw those in. There, there already are fans of other teams, but it's, yeah, going to widen the, the net this time and see how that, see how that goes. Hmm. Do you widen the net by posting more of those like trendy topics? Yeah. So, and so like I made a video on the Corbin Burns trade to the, to the Orioles the other week. Yeah. So that's an example that has nothing to do with the Mariners in any way. It was a trade between the Brewers and the Orioles. And I, I just made an in-depth video covering both sides of the trade. And, you know, it didn't get a ton of views. It's not even at a thousand views yet. But, you know, once the season gets going and Corbin Burns is tearing it up, people are going to type in Corbin Burns. They're going to be like, oh, here's the details of the trade. Yeah, I've been looking for that. And then eventually, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, I, there might be certain people that just try to get clicks right now and that instant gratification but ultimately it comes down to, I'm just trying to put out the most quality content I can about subjects that I'm interested in and that I know baseball fans would be interested in and want to know information about. And then, you know, whatever the results are, so be it. Hmm. Yeah. What, what lights you up the most, the, like the podcast conversations, those player profiles or those, like I'm guessing yeah. it's not the trendy topics, but so I was actually asked the exact same question. I uh I haven't told you this story yet, and I'm not gonna share the full details on air, but uh I got connected with someone within the Mariners. Actually, they reached out directly to me via email and were like, Hey, I found your channel and I was super blown away. So I jumped on a on a Zoom call with him. Let's go. No, I know it's insane. And yeah, he said that he was getting ready to interview M Mitch Garber. And he found my Mitch Garver player profile and he was like, oh my gosh, this is like crazy. Like how good this is and not trying to talk myself up, but this is literally what he said. And, um, he's because basically it's like, I'm able in that video, whether you're a beginner fan or if you're, if you've been following the team and you, you know, all the details of Mitch Garver, like there's something there for everyone. And so he said that he saw that video and then he watched like a bunch of my other videos and then he reached out and um, I forgot the question again, but <laughs> I might be helping the Mariners like start a video podcast, hmm. which is, that's cool. Which is, crazy. that's insane, yeah. dude. Um, that's sick. Dude, you're only two years deep. I guess here, I got you. Oh, yeah. What? So I was like, which one I guess lights you yep. up the most was uh, whether it was like those player profiles or the actual podcast, but you even just said with that Mitch Garber one, it's like, in, I mean, in some way, in some way you package this like super dense interview prep for a reporter. Like if, like if you're going, you're like, oh, we, I got to interview Mitch Garver post game. 
um, it, or in spring training, it's like literally every reporter could watch your video and then be like, all right, now I can actually ask him like, Hey, what was it like going? They from... know his entire upbringing. Yeah. Cause where'd he go? Like New Mexico state or something? Yeah. Like, New Mexico state. Yeah. And it was like, cool. How's that? Versus like that reporter is going to do all that back end research and like you, you put it in like a zip file and was right. like, yo, watch these, watch, watch these 15 minute, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, so to answer your question, and this is, that's why I brought that up is because he, he asked the same question and I just said that they're equally as cool and fun to be honest, because it's like the player profile, you know, it takes a lot of focus. And like I told him, it takes like 10 hours to make one of those player profile videos. That's 10 minutes long because of all the research that I'm doing. I'm trying to find interviews of the player, all these different things. And to be able to go from like an idea to creating that entire like short film, I would call it is really rewarding and that's a lot of fun to be able to watch it at the end you know have a finished product and that work is done um that's that's really fun but then at the same time being able to really dive deep with someone and learn their story and who they are and you know ask them follow-up questions on certain topics that come up that i might not have known already that's equally as fun it's just it's uh yeah i'm just taking it day by day but it's been a blast really every part of it yeah hmm. Yeah, the player profile is crazy too because if you think like, I mean, obviously the numbers are going to be off a little bit, but you could do like 200 or 250 hours of dense work and then you're like, hey, MLB, or I guess it would be Mariners specifically, but Mariners front office or Mariners marketing or whatever that may be, you're like, yo, 250 hours of work, here's a player profile on every guy for the the MLB opening day roster have, or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like maybe you're not getting that deep on all 25, but if you're like, hey, the 15 guys that we're going to probably see the most. It's a good idea. It's like the, yeah, and it's that's cr it's crazy because you could literally like make the people in the Mariners like, like even a, I'm thinking it from a, from a coaching standpoint. Like if I'm about to coach Mitch Garver, like, yeah, I'm going to have good conversations with him and I'm going to be a genuine person. But like if I'm the strength coach, like I might check that out and then just be like, dude, you went to this high school? What? Like you did that. And like, yeah, you learn that through authentic conversation, but yeah. also like you do back end work to learn stuff about people, whether that's like podcasting or you're going to go meet up. It's like when we were going to go meet for a beer, I was like, dude, I got to look at his <laughs> stuff first. Yeah. Like, I'm not just going to go in blind and ask him like dumb questions. <laughs> like, Oh, you have YouTube. You're like, dude, I know. Like, I'm curious. Yeah. So that's, that's super cool. Well, so then to throw back on you, you know, how has your experience been up to this point with podcasting and what's your ultimate goal or what's your driver with how you started and with the journey that you've been on? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> A couple hours right now. Um, yeah. okay. So I, I think we've, we've talked about this and I've talked about it a lot on the pod, but like it continues to evolve, but I would say, okay. So starting point, I really just started asking myself, especially in like 2020, I started in 2021. I started writing online. So I started a newsletter for the most part. I've been consistent. Like there's been ebbs and flows. Like, like in November, I was posting like two newsletters a week, which is, which was legit legit. And then, uh, I took a little break and then I posted like 18 pods in two months. And then that's insane. Are yeah. All and then recorded like recorded within those two months or are those pre-recorded at all? Or is it just like you're oh, doing no. a podcast every day? I was doing like either individual podcasts, which are like recap of my writing, or I was interviewing, I was basically interviewing a guest twice a week and then also doing podcasts, like solo ones oh, wow. that are basically, it's like an audio version of my newsletter. Cause a lot of my, I think we, we talked about this a little bit, mm -hmm. but it was like my buddies, some of my buddies, like they don't want to read it. Or if you're driving in the car, it's like, Hey, what's up everybody. I hope you're having a great day. You know, it's Friday. If it's sunny, I hope you're like soaking in the, soaking in the sunshine. And um, thanks for like checking out my audio newsletter. Yeah. And then bang, bang, bang. It's like nine minute audio instead of having to like read it physically yeah. on your phone. Um, but I've, I've gone through these waves and then recently, so like February 1st, I started this new project called the daily deposit. And, uh, I basically it is my version of going all in on copying, uh, Ryan holiday and a little bit of like some other writers that influenced me, but the ideas of daily stoic. So um, the podcast is going to ramp up and I'm glad we're, we're recording this podcast today, but I need to edit a few pods that I, that I have saved up and get those out this month because I posted a article every day for the uh, month of February. So like today, today was probably the best one I've written in a long time, but it was a uh, honey, I'm home energy. 
and it, it ties in well with like today being Valentine's Day. But um, yeah, I just go through these ebbs and flows with the newsletter and the podcast. But bringing it back to your question was, I I was really looking for clarity in what it is that I truly want, and then what are skills that will help me be a better like human being. And that's like, I could use that in coaching. I could use that in teaching. I could use that in connecting with my friends and people that just mean a lot to me. So um, it was this idea of like, to think clearly, I need to write. So I can write in my journal and then I can also write in public. And then if I could write clearly, because writing is a forcing function of clarity, then I use writing and my thinking to better communicate like through podcasting. And then it's like, cool, if I could write, if I can write in public, I could write in a journal to myself and I could podcast and ask great questions and listen, then I can think more clearly about like what it is I truly want in my life. And I don't mean just like what job do I want or yeah. stuff like that. It was like deep down, like, okay, what, what kind of life do I want to live? Do I really want to like dive into like my curiosity? Like, like I love the art of podcasting. I love the art of conversation and I'm super curious and always learning. So I would say those were the drivers. Um, I really went in like, not, not like, Oh, I want this many listens. Oh, I'm trying to get paid. Like I still have some friends being like, dude, like when are you going to start making money off this? And I'm like, if I, if I do, that's great. But right now it's really on improving the craft and getting to a hundred episodes by my birthday, which is July 18th. So I want to get a hundred reps uh, of podcast episodes while staying consistent with like the coaching and the writing and, and all those other buckets I have in my life. But no, the podcast has been awesome. I, I think it's the, the topic I texted you about it's iteration. So that's something that's really been weighing on my mind in a, in a positive way is like, it's not enough to be consistent because you can be consistently bad, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, or like Chris Williamson has that quote. It's uh like being consistent doesn't guarantee you'll be successful, but being inconsistent will guarantee you'll be unsuccessful. So I guess right now I'm in the season of like, I need to continue to get reps in my writing and my podcasting or how those mesh up together. Uh, and then it's like that, that process of iteration, how like each time can I get a little bit better? Like, yeah. it's kind of funny saying it on the podcast, but I, I do have this like thing that I've noticed. I was telling my roommate Shab, uh, shout out is, uh, he's never noticed. And then I told him and he's like, Oh man, you do do that. <laughs> and sometimes in the podcast, I'll go, Hmm. Yep. When, when you say something cool, I'm like, Hmm. <laughs> and then I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> like you can just nod your head and be like sick, man. Like that's <laughs> sick. Like you don't need to say anything. So I think it's, it's improved iteration. That's a small example, but just continue to iterate even, even being, instead of putting pressure on myself, just being proud. Like, dude, you took a podcast from a year and a half ago and you cut three minute clip and you put it on YouTube and you made a thumbnail, which doesn't look like Chris Williamson's or my first million, Danny Miranda. Like it doesn't look like all the big name podcasters, but you did your best. And the actual content of that three minute video is elite. Like I think like it's uh, Ben Wilson explaining what zeal means and like zeal or to like be zealous means to boil and it's like the feeling and it means like to act like boiling of water inside of you yeah. and it and it was like th this short little clip on like when you see someone like you admire them so much you feel a boil inside and it's like oh dude like that's what we live for is like finding those people we look up to and you're like wow that dude's not only incredible like i can also be like that yeah like that zeal and I'm like, cool, that's a three minute banger. I'm gonna put that on YouTube. Yeah. So I would say that's like in a in a quicker way of explaining it is like starting to where I am now. It's it's like how you use that word evergreen, or like Ryan Holiday has the book Perennial Seller. It's like, okay, next one is like how do we make like real meaningful things that are that are evergreen? People can go back to them while also like I'm iterating and trying to improve that quality. And also not being like, mm, every <laughs> single time where I, where I have to edit. That could that just be out. your bodily function of like you storing the information. Like that's now saved in your memory bank because you did that, you know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my verbal, like, holy shit, I'm actually listening right now. Like that's, 
Yeah, it is actually. That's funny you said it that way. So what's your daily process like as far as the newsletter with the podcast? Is it kind of the same like what I've been doing up to this point, which is like interviewing people or are you talking specifically about topics? Because, you know, it's like, how easy is it? Or are you spending an hour brainstorming different topics for like newsletters for the week? Or is it just whatever you feel like that day? Because do you ever hit, I guess, the question would be, do you ever hit a, a wall or do you ever have brain fog or creative, you know, writer's block? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So it can always improve. And, but for right now, I literally ask myself like which one like sets my heart on fire. And then I just do that one. Cause it's like, if I'm really feeling the writing, me working on the podcast is not like, there's no judgment behind it. Like, I, like I have a, a couple podcasts recorded right now. And the only thing I need to do is record the intros. Yep. And to, yes, they're going to come out by the end of the second week of February, but I've just been vibing with the writing. So I, I think one process for me is I block off time. And so I'm like, okay, in the next hour, I'm going to do, this is my time to work. I can pick whatever it is. And then I'm going to do that um, instead of trying to do both. Like one thing that I know it, it's, it's ironic <laughs> that you asked me that because at times when I'm like, Oh, I kind of have writer's block. I don't really want to write, but I know I should, I will start pulling clips off of Riverside and make reels to put them on Instagram Okay, because that's fun. Yeah. And it's a little like dopamine entertaining and it's way easier than writing, you know, like writing. I'm like, damn, I don't know what I'm going to say <laughs> today, but but I also think, so I, I would say first I block it off. And that's that's why like Cathedral Coffee is so like sacred to me. Because when I go there, I don't work on like work stuff. Like UP, University of Portland, strength conditioning, um, anything like that. Like I'm literally going there to journal, work on the podcast, write, or like kick it with somebody if they're in town and they like want to meet up there and get coffee. So I'll pick a time block and then I'll, I'll know like, okay, you can only be there for 40 minutes. What's the one thing you want to work on? Um, for, for the newsletter, I mean, I, I would say like life is also constant research. Like it's, it's not like I sit down and I'm like, Oh, I need to, like, I would say my research for you is like, I watched one YouTube video of yours every couple days and I would text you when I thought stuff was cool and I watched all your reels, but I wasn't, I didn't binge watch them. I would just watch them. Yeah. And then like, yeah, before this, I was like, okay, dude, like, you've checked out this guy's stuff for like the past month, like go back and look at what you like. So I would say that's a unique part for me is at least for the podcast, like people I've had on recently, I would like scroll through my notes, like the last time I got coffee with them or, okay, I'm going to look up every article I ever read from them. Because a lot of the people I have on the podcast, it's like, I'm genuinely interested in them. And I already learned a bunch of stuff about them. For sure. But just by like, their content being in my life. It wasn't like, oh shoot, dude, you're jumping on the pod. Like I got to binge like two hours of your YouTube because I've never seen any of your stuff. Right. So I would say that's where I'm at right now. That might change if I, I mean, if I had like more guests on consistently that I've never really, like there's a couple people I really want to have on their podcast, but I haven't fin I would love to invite them, but I haven't finished their book. And I just personally think that'd be lame. Like I want to finish the book and then I want to, have my notes ready. Yeah. And I mean, if I wrote a book and someone's like, dude, you want to come in and talk on the book? I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, oh yeah, I'm like one chapter in. <laughs> I mean, it's like, unless it's like Joe Rogan, you know, like, yeah. so I would say my research is more like that. It's, I'm just constantly like, like one of my daily deposits is like investing in my curiosity. So it's like, am I listening to a podcast? Am I reading an article or checking something out that, and I don't know the stuff that matters sticks, you know, and then you can, so that's how I look at it uh, from the writing side for topics. It's just stuff where I'm like, yo, that's sick. Like, I think I could write about that. And like, yeah, I'm probably like in my journal, there's like lists and I have like a notion template on my phone. So I'll type in ideas in, and it's just like this long list of things that I think are really cool. Yeah. And then I just sort through like, okay, what's really hitting me right now? And how can I really take advantage of that spark of like inspiration instead of it's like, I mean, it's life. Um, one of my friends, Tom, we, we always sauna and he said like, 
basically everything in life comes down to like if an object's in motion it stays in motion and if it's not like it's it's not or that's very butchered but shout out to tom he he it's like so true like the recording podcast is easier when you're recording podcasts and it's easier to collect ideas when you're already like i look at my phone and i'm like oh that's sick or i listen to a podcast i'm like oh like like recently it was like verbs over nouns and then it was ironic i wrote about it and then i listened to a, po- a couple cup podcasts and that idea by austin cleon kept popping up randomly in other people's conversations and i was like okay like that's a wink from the universe i think i'm onto something here because yeah. a lot of people just started talking about austin cleon for some reason like going back into that keep going book which which is good but i could rant about that a while that that was a, that's a good question yeah and i mean like just talking to you you know it's like it's not every day that you come in contact with people that are as thoughtful as you are hmm. and thanks that yeah put as much thought and attention and like work into growing getting better learning all that stuff and um you know i kind of wanted to go into your 100, 100 mile race real quick because oh, like as you were talking cool. i was like this kind of sounds like david goggins talking right now it's like in your you know, you're doing the long distance running and all that stuff too. So like, what's your, you know, drive to do all of those things? Huh? Is there a burning something inside you that is like pushing you to do these things or, or, you know, do you seek tough? And cause it's like, you know, what people say is like, you put yourself in uncomfortable positions or uh, situations on purpose and you know you'll get better from that that's how you you grow is the proper stress so yeah uh i love i actually love that that reframe and that that perspective because i really i really like david goggins and I, i love his stuff but i would say i'm much more in in you're more put together with your words than he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, I, no, and this is no knock on him. Like I bet, I bet he's super compassionate, but yeah. I would say like, I'm a lot more of like a feeler. Like I'm, I'm a pretty compassionate person. Like I would say like, I'm the person who I'm like, love you, man. To like my best friends. Yeah. And, and I guess connecting that back is like, like even running a hundred mile race, it wasn't like, oh yeah. Like I want to do something super hard. Like I'm going to do it barefoot. Like. <laughs> do hard things. Yeah. It's, I looked at it as more of like, like David Goggins figured out who he was and also who he could become through doing hard things, not just doing the thing where that's why I think it's ironic when people say stay hard and it's like, okay, like, you know, like running into a brick wall <laughs> and head butting cement is pretty difficult. But like, nobody's doing that, yeah. you know, nobody's, I mean, I mean, maybe the NFL is close to that, but, <laughs> um, I, I think here, I'm kind of sorting through this out loud, but I, honestly, like the thing is like, I want to know who I can become and who I can truly be. And that's like me being the best version of me, the most clear version of me. And yeah, it's ironic. Like looking back on the hundred mile race. I just wanted to see if one, I could prepare for it and one, I could do it and who I could be through all of that. Not necessarily like, yeah, I did something super hard. Cause like, honestly, I don't feel like I did something super hard. It at sometimes feels like it wasn't even real. And then other days I'm like, holy shit. Like <laughs> I can't believe I, I did that. Yeah. And yeah, it took me 31 hours and 49 minutes. And I ran from Bend, Oregon, basically around Tumalo Falls. Like if you've ever been to Tumalo Falls, like I did a figure eight around Tumalo Falls up to Mount Bachelor. And then I bombed out through Peterson Ridge uh, to downtown Sisters. So instead of taking the 45 minute drive on the freeway, it was a 31 hour and 49 minute run um, <laughs> through the woods. And, but I, I really think like, it was just the question like, dude, I don't like, this is really scary and I don't know if I can do it, but I think I'll be, I'll better figure out who I am by trying to do it. And, and one big, one big driver behind that is uh, the author, Michael Easter. He wrote 
um, the book Comfort Crisis and most recently The Scarcity Brain. And he interviews Marcus Elliott, who's this strength coach uh, down in Santa Barbara, but they talked about this idea of a Masogi. And um, it's it's got blown up a lot more before it was Marcus Elliott and like Kyle Korver, the three-point shooter in the NBA. And uh, they would always do like this one year defining moment. And uh, you couldn't really, I mean, initially you were like not supposed to tell people about it. Um, you just do it for yourself. And then it's kind of blown up where Jesse Itzler, famous entrepreneur, he's married to like Sarah Blakely. Um, she's like billionaire, founder of Spanx. And uh, they're a okay. badass family. They got like four kids. They're killing it. Like that, you're like ideal fam right there. And, uh, but this idea, the other big driver was a pick one year defining moment that when you attempt it, it's not even about completing it, it's when you attempt it, like that level of impact impacts every other day of your year. But it also like time stamps the year. So like, I will always look back on 2023 and be like, damn, I ran 100 miles. So I think with the podcast too and the writing, it wasn't like, oh, I like have never really looked at like, oh man, it's gonna be really hard. I mean, I knew it, it's not gonna be easy, but I like, I remember even getting ready. <laughs> It was funny. My mom was helping me get ready at like 430 in the morning, the day of my race. And she was like, are you okay? And it was like dead silent. I was barely playing some like Morgan Wallen and I was drinking coffee and eating some oatmeal. And I was just like, Hey, could you like not talk to me? <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I was like, I just need to be right now. <laughs> yeah. And it, it wasn't even like hype or any like that. Right. I just wanted to be quiet and I just wanted to chill. Cause it was one of those where I was like, dang, I'm, I'm not going to be back at this Airbnb for at least a day. 36 hours <laughs> yeah. probably like it's going to be a long time so yeah it was ultimately and that's something that's a really big driver behind my podcast is like one thing we're in control of is who we become so i would say that is more like yeah i love like stay hard like get after it or take souls and and all of that stuff from david goggins but i, I mean even in, in his message it's about uncovering like who you can be not just like doing hard stuff like or it's like like you have the cold exposure habit right like you get into cold water i haven't done it in a couple of weeks but we won't we'll talk about that <laughs> yeah i mean but you're chilling and it yeah but it's like yeah the thing is hard and yeah it's like it never gets easier but ultimately like it's it's all the back end stuff of like dude i like i, I chose to do that versus always, like, it, like it, that yeah with that, that that's something least, you're be, becoming yeah it's and it's always, you know, uh, it's always, it's hundred percent mental and it's always easier than you thought it was going to be. Like once you get in, it's like, this isn't as bad as I put it out to be. So yeah, probably through doing hard stuff intentionally, you're rewiring your brain so that when something difficult comes up in your life, it's not actually as difficult or you don't have that mental block to where it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, this is what needs to happen next. This is what I need to do. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And then it's like, I think it's looking at it from the perspective of like, who am I going to become by doing this? Yeah. Am I going to become more of like the type of person I want to be? And then it's actually interesting. I, I do tie that into like how many times, even just asking the question, like how many times have you failed? Or like, we've both talked about cold outreach. Like, you know, when you hit up pro athletes, just cause they don't, just cause you hit up someone to be on your podcast doesn't mean you failed. They just didn't answer. Right. And then, and then if you look at it, it's like, yo, what is, like, what are you bat? What's your batting average right now for getting guests on your podcast? Like, I bet it, it'd be pretty surprising. I, I know that was for me. Like, one of my friends was like, "Dude, how's the outreach with people going?" And I'm like, "Oh man, now that you ask, like, I'm batting like 700. I didn't even realize that. Like, yeah, and yeah, and it's like, then you, and that's like a hard thing. What you ask someone, hey, I really love your work. I read it all the time. Will you come on the podcast? You know." leads like it's reaching out is hard also but once you do it enough it, it gets a lot easier for sure yeah hmm. that was a really good question yeah yeah the 100 mile race is yeah i know i'm, I'm excited it, you it's see... interesting yeah taking that perspective because i'm going to be running the eugene marathon april 28th so it'll be i don't know what it's going to be like to run only one marathon because like even one of my buddies was like dude you're chilling he already ran four in one day so yeah. yeah but it'll be exciting i've been trying to get a group of guys together to uh we're all gonna go down there and run it and and get fit and, and go off so yeah it's like you talk about sick. 2023 
and you'll always remember that year because you ran hundred miles. I ran a full marathon in 2019 and that was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I, it's like, I do two half marathons a year now, the Portland Shamrock and the Portland half marathon, but Hey, it's like one month out from Shamrock. Yeah. And the thing is like with the, with the half marathon, I need to train like pretty minimally. And that's the thing is it's, it's kind of taking the easy route. Cause yeah, if you're doing a marathon, you gotta be training and you gotta be training for a while versus, you know, the half marathon, you could probably bust it out pretty quick with the training and all that. But yeah, yeah props think, to you. <laughs> I think, I think within that too, though, is recognizing that ju- like your, your judgment on it, because also, I think one thing that the podcast and the writing has taught me is like, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm committed, like I'm doing it, but I also think it's like the skill of giving yourself grace because, you know, it's like, dude, it's couch GM time. It's not <laughs> marathon time. Right. You know, it's like, if you can get couch GM to blow up and March is like, dude, you're going to run a half marathon during spring training Yeah. when like your YouTube channel is ripping <laughs> and you have like a full-time job. It's like. Um, I actually just wrote about this, but it's from Steven Pressfield, but it's, um, it's like, how can you be a hundred percent committed 10% of the time? And it's, it was basically this idea, uh, Steven Pressfield wrote about this writer and he would write for an hour every day for the whole year. And if you think about writing for one hour every day before his eight hour job, that's nine 40 hour work weeks. That's how much it adds up to. Jeez. So if you think like you do have a 40 hour side hustle by working on something and it's this idea of like, you don't like you're a hundred percent committed to running the half marathon. It's just, yeah, it doesn't take as much time to prep as it would be if you were doing like a full blown Ironman. Right. So that's something I've been trying to re- be really aware of, of like the story I'm telling myself and like, I'm like, oh man, that was so bad. Like, what was I? And then you're like. <laughs> dude, who, who said it's bad? You know, it's not like I go easy lied for an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and you're not, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like, you still have high standards and high expectations, sure. but it's like, dude, next year when you're, maybe you build out the soccer side and the football side of your channel and the Mariners part blows up and you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to run a marathon. Like, and it fits better with the MLB winter meetings and it's not during October right? because the Mariners are going to be playing in October this year. So like, yep. Yeah, it's like don't schedule a marathon in October because the Mariners are going to be killing yeah. it. But I, I, I think I've really tried to get better. I mean, I'm not, I'm not preaching to you because I need to get way better at this. That makes sense. But it is something I've thought about where I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, you didn't like. But I would never say that to like my best friend. Like if my best friend missed a week on his podcast, I'd call him and be like, bro, <laughs> like, do we need to record a pod? Like, like what are you, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this. I'm like, sick, man. Like, let's go hang out at a coffee shop for two hours. You can let's do it on Sunday and then you can still get it out. Yeah. And I think it's just like, it's almost like tactical grace for sure. Versus like, I mean, it's like, imagine if every day this whole year, you're like, fuck me, dude. I, what, <laughs> I didn't run a marathon. And it's like, no, dude, you're a badass. You ran two halves and you have the sick page. So it's like having gr- great, sorry for cussing. If no, that messes kidding. up your yeah. YouTube channel, <laughs> but it's, I don't know. It's like this, it's this tough thing because you could easily just be like, man, I'm not going to do anything. And it's like, you're not going to get that low. Like, right. You have too much, too many standards for yourself, but I don't know. That gets me gassed up. That's something I've been really like, I like that perspective. On. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's like, it's just where you're at right now. Like it's, it's all good. And then it's like, cool that that can evolve. And cause like too. in my mind, it's like, I am totally fine. Not running a full marathon ever again, to be honest, <laughs> just cause of, yeah. And that's sick. Just cause of how, yeah. It's like, yeah. The half marathon is just enough to like, if I do it and I don't train for it, then it's going to suck. And that's my thing to deal with. But it's like that consistency of, I will do this twice a year. It'll keep me in shape. Like I'll force myself to stay running and all this stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's just, I look at it like seasons too. It's like, okay, what season are you in? Like, all right, you're in the, the halves and going all in on the couch DM and like building that out, which like sick that's the time of year and then like cool maybe there's a year where couch gms like maybe some other people step up and start helping you with it and you're like you know what like i'm maybe i'm gonna mush both these half marathons together and then for like, sure yeah everything comes together um are you gonna do another 100 miler i think i've asked you that before 
Yeah, uh, maybe someday. I don't know. Like, I would if my one of my friends did it, and I would like wanted to pay some or something. I would, but I'm never gonna say never. But it's not at uh, the top of my list. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty excited. I'm thinking about. So I signed up for Eugene. I really want to run New York, and it'd be cool to do Portland. Uh, I think a big push for me right now is. I've talked about this idea before, but it's from Danny Miranda, and I, I always mess this up. I can't remember the guest, but Danny Miranda asked, like, how do you make friends without drinking alcohol? And this guy was like sober, moved, just moved to New York, but he had this really good idea. And I mean, it's not the, so much the alcohol part, it's more of the principle. And it was like, stop trying to make friends and be the friend. Yeah. So it's like, Instead of trying to make friends, you're like, oh, like, is anybody doing anything this weekend? Or you're like sitting in your house hoping somebody texts you. It's you're just like, yo, I'm going to go do this. Do you guys want to go? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go run the waterfront. Does somebody want to hop in? Like I'm doing six. OK, if you don't want to run that far, I'll do five. But like I'm going to go do this thing. Right. Does anybody want to kick it? So I've really tried to attach that to planning things. So using. uh like the marathon, like uh, some of my buddies, we're going to run the Eugene a couple buddies in Portland are like, well, we live here. We might as well run the Portland. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do that in October. Nice. Um, but yeah, no hundred milers on got to chill on that. Yeah. I, I my little, my little brother, he's doing a half iron man in Salem in June. Oh, that's sick. And, uh, he was trying to talk myself and my older brother into doing it. But like this year with the timing. And so, of course, we both committed to doing it in 25, I think. So oh, let's go. That, that would be cool, you know, just to do one of those. Um, and then, you know, eventually he wants to do a full Ironman, I think. But that that's like a whole different thing, too, because then you got to buy the bike. You have to buy the all this different stuff and you have to be training like nonstop for that. So, but yeah, you're buying all the memories, man. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Those experiences. Yeah. 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 It's like, uh, that's something else I've, I've kind of changed my perspective on too. Like, or not changed. It's just continue to evolve, but it's like how Jesse Itzler talks about like building out this life resume, you know, it's like everybody loves upgrading their LinkedIn. And then it's like, everybody loves upgrading their Instagram posts of like all the cool stuff. And it's like finding that happy medium in between. It's like d building your life resume for you, not necessarily like posting on Instagram. Cause like someone's going to think your social status your yeah your social status so it's like building out your life resume and then that's been a big influence for me i mean bill perkins he has this book called die with zero and it's like our life is a life is like the sum of our experiences so being being aware of like dude when you're when you're 45 you probably can't do that half marathon or 55 or whatever like um and then it so i'm like i'm just like i'm 32 so I've been looking at it like, okay, how can I maximize this? Because I got seven summers until I'm 40. And then I got 17 summers until I'm 50. And it's like, okay, cool. Like way. summers, summers mean way more. For sure. Like, yeah. Man. Yeah. So that's sick, dude. That's sick. You signed up. I mean, the, the, the coolest part about it is all the training sessions you're going to have leading up to it. Like that's going to be the big meat and potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's sick. Do that's you want to walk me through, uh, since we're on all this, the the grounding that you do and the science behind it and and all oh, that because yeah. it's a huge thing in baseball you know you walk out way before batting practice and there's you know like tom murphy he was a catcher for the mariners he would always be out there with his headphones in barefoot walking around you know the field and a lot of people are doing that now so yeah okay so dude you'll think this is sick um okay so podcast right before this so before this one or i mean this will probably be Okay, so there's a couple podcasts before this. Harvey Martin, he uh, owns a company called The Art of Something. And I've followed his stuff for a really long time. Um, probably like four, not really long time, like four years. Like um, a friend, JP Martinez, he's actually the bullpen. He's the assistant pitching coach for the San Francisco Giants. Um, but I met him when I played, or when I coached, I didn't play. Um, so he, what I was trying to say is he played for the Twins. And then he ended up roundabout becoming a pitching coach for the twins. When I was a strength coach for low way in 2017, um, for the Cedar Rapids Colonels, um, he was our pitching coach. So that's how we met. And like, we'd always talk about books and like podcasts and stuff. And he just has like a really cool story. Well, now he's the big league pitching, assistant pitching coach 
and he's in the bullpen. But he texted me and was like, yo, you got to check out this guy's stuff. I think you and him would really get along. So I listen, I used to listen to the Mind Strong Project podcast, which is Harvey's. And he was all in on this idea of human performance. So that's like breath work, cold exposure, sauna, movement, grounding, all these concepts. And most recently, I've actually had him on the podcast, which is sick. We, we actually talked about writing because he just finished his second book. Um, but he is the one like you see on Instagram all the time with uh, Gabe Kapler and all those Giants guys would be walking around the field barefoot or like he'd be out in center field with Jock Peterson and they'd be doing like breath work. And um, he was the big league human performance coach. And I really like how they, it's like human performance, not just mental performance. Yeah. And like, it comes back to like, everything is everything. Like if you can change your physiology through breathing, then it's like, cool, you can change states. Like you can ramp up when you need to ramp up. Or if you need to ramp down and you are ramped up, you can bring that back. So, I mean, I'm obsessed with like health and performance, just like being in regards to like strength conditioning and like, yeah, lifting weights is, is fun and doing like all like speed work and fitness and, and all of those things. But there's a lot more, there's a lot more like, I call it lifestyle performance, but it also is human performance. Like lifestyle performance, I, I did a podcast with a guy, Mike Nielsen, at, he has the Hoop Commitment Podcast. He's the director at Gonzaga. And it's this idea for college student athletes. It's sleep, school, fun, fueling, and sport. So like tying those all in together, like you're at, an athlete doesn't necessarily think about those. But if like, if you don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't, you don't go to class and you don't have fun, then it's really hard to practice. And then like, you're really in trouble. Like it doesn't matter how good you are at your sport. Yeah. So it's like being aware of that lifestyle performance. So bringing this back full picture, it's like educating student athletes and educating like my friends or investing in my daily deposit newsletter of like grounding is like, you just touch your bare feet to the actual like earth. And it's this crazy, like I, there's a podcast I can send you, but Gary Brecca, he's the guy that got like Dana White jacked recently. Yeah, his doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So Basically, it's this idea that we we discharge electrons and it, there's some thing that it impacts like our pH of our blood and like repolarizes our cells by just standing in the grass for three minutes and like you feel better. And it's it's funny because like you go on vacation, there's a lot of other reasons why you probably feel better on that vacation, but you're also barefoot walking through the beach. Like if you go to Hawaii or something yeah. and and that's something like the grounding is just like, oh man, like I need to do that more. It's and it's free. And it's like people dump all this money into like sauna yeah. or I don't know, like red light therapy, or they're like, oh, I got to get those Norma Tech boots or I got to get my $400 Theragun. <laughs> and it's like when you wake up in the morning, like drink water with lemon in it and go stand in the grass for five minutes. And then when you feel stressed out, journal. And it's like your wallets, like your, that credit card bill is way smaller and you're doing a lot of great things yeah. and like get on the back end, like get some sleep and you're like, cool. Okay. Those are a lot more free. So yeah. Yeah. With the grounding stuff. Oh, what's up? You got a cat. Yeah, I got two cats yeah. running around. Uh, yeah. With the grounding stuff, it's just like, it's something I've just been diving into and it, it was a part of my, my new newsletter daily deposit because like, yeah, a lot of it is about training, but it's. I think the bigger thing is what is your daily deposit? That's the part I'm trying to uncover is like, you don't have to do mine. Right. You just need to define yours. And what I wrote about was like, one option is your daily deposit could be stand in the grass with bare feet. So I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the best at explaining it, but um, Gary Brecka talked about like minimum effective dose is three to five minutes, which you're like, yo, like as my, as my buddy Mike would say, what are you, Bill Gates? Like, dude, no one's that busy. You got three right. minutes to same thing with the cold three. plunge. It's three minutes or eleven minutes a week is what uh, Heberman was saying. So it, it doesn't yeah. take long to do certain things. You just have to, you know, uh, intentionally do things. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's the part with the daily deposit. It's like you don't have to save the world. It's like you don't have to do this five-hour workout. It's about doing like what's twenty minutes every day or three minutes every day that could really change your life in the in the long run. But yeah, the grounding thing we talked about this off mic, but it's. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. Like today, it's like pretty cloudy. It was like 38. It's kind of rainy. So you, do, but it's you like, go outside you know, and do it every day? 
Oh uh, no, so I'm not, I'm not there yet yeah. every day, but I do uh, I do get out there and let the dogs eat. You just put bare feet in the grass, stand there. I try to like set my phone away and just like yeah. take a few breaths and then pop like pop my shoes back on and and back at it. It's something that that I want to. It is something I want to do more of. It's yeah, it's like the same thing for me with like I want to read the Bible more, and so you know trying to find just read one chapter when I, when I can in a day when I can force myself to sit down and focus only on that. Yeah. Turn off the notifications hmm. with the phone and all that. So that's cool. Yeah. One of my, one of my old student athletes, uh, she graduated last year. She was on the women's basketball team, but she just texted me about like, she was doing her own version of the daily deposit and she was reading the Bible. Everything was read the Bible every day. I don't think there were that many parameters around it. So it was like, if she read for a little bit, that's great. If she read for an hour, that's awesome. But it was cool to hear, like, have her text because she was like, yo, I'm just trying to go 30 for 30. Like, that was the goal was do it every day. Yeah. And it's like, hell yeah. And then that can grow. Like, I mean, most of the time you're probably going to sit down and read more than one page. So, yeah. And, yeah. and for me, it's like, I don't know if this is just, a, you know, a time period of this is a general thing for everybody. But for me, it's hard for me to sit down and focus to read anything. That's where it's like, oh, I, I'm an audible yeah. person. I am a YouTube person, you know, audio, audio visual. But me sitting down looking at a page, like I'll realize that I'm just staring at the page or something, you know, or if I read something, then my train of thought will take me somewhere mm -hmm. and like start thinking about all these things and then realize, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be reading, you know? Yeah. I mean, in some ways, it's like a purposeful distraction. Then like you just recognize that and be like, okay, why am I thinking about all these things? Okay. There's a lot of input here. Or I think about timing too. Like, I'm like, oh man, you're not reading enough. And then I realize, like, oh, dude you trying to read at 9 30 PM is like, that's why it's not working. Like I just know I'm a lot more efficient in the mornings. Okay. So that's, it's like, if I'm choosing to read, then I'm a lot, I'm going to be a lot better in the mornings. Yeah. But huh? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm the, I'm in the same boat. You start reading, you're like, Oh, I've read the same page three times. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or it's like, even it, it's the same thing. Even listening to a podcast, it's like, I'll be driving in the car, listening to an audible and then be like, Oh, I'm back. Okay. Let's rewind this a couple minutes because I mm. just spaced again. <laughs> yeah. What, what, is, what do you think that is, is for you? Is that you're in the future, like thinking about things that you, you need to do or should do or can't wait or like what, feel, what brings you, what helps you be present? Yeah. I definitely feel like I'm and my wife will say it sometimes. She's like, you're in your head, you're in your head. Like, what are you thinking about right now? And yeah, it's, it's definitely difficult to be present and in, in the moment all the time because I'm always thinking of an idea, you know, like I mentioned, a train of thought. If I think about one thing, it'll take me down a rabbit hole and I'll just keep following it. I'll think out like an entire thought process and then, okay, that's not going to work back up a little bit, then like readjust and go down that. So it's like, you know, my, how I problem solve, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, I definitely need to focus on being present and in the moment and realizing, you know, where I'm at right now and take that time to, to be there. Um, cause yeah, I can definitely get, but I think it's just, I guess kind of who I am with my creativity, I guess you could say, and just my train of thought th thought process. That's just how I think through things, I guess. Yeah. I'm very similar. That's why, that's why I ask, like, I'll be, I'll be thinking, 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 you know, like, yeah. Like, how do you get out of your head? You ever feel like it's, you ever feel like you're like super in your head and you're like, dude, I just need to like slow these thoughts down. Not yeah. I, I tend to just kind of let my mind do what it does. Um, mm -hmm. Cause typically, you know, it's thinking of a video idea or thinking of something business wise, or, you know, I'm probably, it's probably problem solving something in my life, whether it's finances or, you know, mortgage lending, my day job, it's just like, there's so much to think about that. It's hard to not think about anything a mm -hmm. lot of the time, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I'm definitely grateful for like where I am and you know, I am grateful for the things that I have. And it's not that I'm trying to escape the present, you know, it's just, I don't know, need, need to be better at that sometimes.
Yeah. Do you ever do you ever feel like it gets in the way? Like when you're like hanging out with your friends or something like that? Because I've noticed that. Like I, I I guess I don't tell them, but in my head I'm like, dude, you gotta stop thinking about I'm sure it's, like that idea. It's also, or you it's gotta, also this. It's also partially that for sure. Yeah. Because it's like unless that's in the other room in in a way, you're probably gonna find something or there's going to be a notification that comes up and then it's going to make you think about something or whatever. It's like mm. probably keeping technology in a different room would be a, a really good idea. That's, mm. that's probably part of it, but yeah. Yeah. David Perel, he's a, a writer online and he has a podcast called how I write. And he has, he just said like so much creativity and ideas come through conversation. And it's funny because I feel like sometimes it does get in the way. Not necessarily I'm on my phone, but we will be talking. I'm like, oh, and like my buddies will like help me think of something. And like, they don't even realize it. We're just talking. And I'm like, oh my God, like I got to write this down. And something, yeah, I've just tried to be more like upfront be like, all right, I got to type this in my phone and then I'm going to put my phone away. Cause, cause I'll or, be like, oh, I need to do something on the phone or I need to look this up. And then like 10 minutes later, I'm like, I was supposed to look that thing up. And like, I got totally distracted and did 10 other things. So yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I've tried to use is my Notion page because I'll just type the notes and I'm like, okay, I'll remember this for later. But it's a lot of those those ideas like we'll be like, I'll just be like BS with my buddies and we'll be talking about something. I'm like, oh, that reminds me of this thing or like, or I'll be like telling them something I learned today and they're like, oh, that's sick. And I'm like, okay, that's good feedback. Like if my buddies think that's cool, like maybe I could write that, like write that into an article or something like that. But yeah, it's like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, I do, I do just like, I'm thinking a lot and, but it's not a bad thing. Also, it's like, you just got to like harness it and, and drive it in the right direction. Also, yeah, like sometimes I think, well, and I guess the, you also have to realize that the way that you think is different from the way everyone else thinks. Right. So it's like, with how I interact with some people, I, I have done it in the past to where they're thinking the same thing as I am. Right. Or they're thinking the same like thought process as I am. So I don't have to say this, but the second that you, like, you need to realize that everyone thinks differently and the way that you think is unique. And so like, if you're going down a thought process, someone's not going down the same lane, they're thinking something else. So I don't know if that adds to anything, but that's something that I've realized. And so that makes me want to, like say more what like on videos instead of avoiding certain things or be like, okay, everyone already knows that it's like, no, say that because not everyone mm -hmm. knows that or is thinking down the same thought process. So I don't know. Is it, do you feel like the, the thinking and like the ideas and like your thoughts bouncing around, you're like, Oh, I could pull this. Do you feel like, what is the driver of that? Is that driver curiosity or is it, like the, the drive to improve or where, where, like, where does that come from for you? The thought process or just like, like how you said, you're like, Oh, I'm constantly thinking about like ideas or how to tie videos back together guess, or who I should hit up next. Yeah. Or... I mean, I've, I would also say that I've always been that way. And, you know, like growing up, I was always a creative and I was the comedian at the dinner table trying to make everyone laugh. And, um, you know, my mom, I can remember times where my mom, you know, would realize the same thing that I'm not present and that I'm thinking of something. So she would kind of say the same things that Katie might now. And so I've kind of always been that way. And that's just like who I am. And I guess I'm blessed to have that and cursed to have that at the same time, you could say. But yeah, so it's just like, I think that's just my creative edge. Hmm. And Cause at the same time, it's like, this is a random thought process again, but you know, with the whole passive income and YouTube, the whole passive income thing is because, you know, sitting at the dinner table, I would hear that my parents are going to work until they're 70. And I'm like, I don't want to work until I'm 70. I need to figure out any way that I can to not have to do that or to at least, you know, be retired by 40 or doing something that I enjoy to where it doesn't feel like work. And the reason for that is so that I can spend the time with my kids and my family when I am a as much as time as I can when I'm, when I'm able to earlier on. Right. And so with passive income, if I get passive income, 
then I could spend more time with my family and my kids while they're growing up and, and all this. So it's like, you might be thinking something some way for a reason. And it's like, you know, you might be thinking that certain way for something, but it's rooted in, in something deeper, I guess. Mm. I don't know. Cause you're, you're married, but you don't have kids. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Dude, do you ever think about the, like the freedom? Cause like, okay, so I'm not married and I don't have kids and I, I wrestle with this idea of like, okay, I'm working on this podcast. I'm working on this writing. I work out, I hang out with my friends, but it's like, when you do have kids and you're like, your goal is to be, have freedom when you have, when your kid's like 10 years old, but it's like, in some ways you're really free right now. Like you have, you know, it's like, you're married, you have like a great job. You live in an area that you like, you're able to invest in this, this project that isn't your primary job. Like you got two cats, so like you got to make sure they're good and stuff like that. Cause that's something I, I wrestle with is like, I'm like, Oh, like I got to grow this so I can make it a side income. So then I could gain more freedom. But actually like I'm 32, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I'm actually like the most free in some ways that I'll ever be, For sure. which, which it's like, there's a different, like you level up in some ways. Like, I mean, it's, it's inc gotta be incredible being a parent. So it's like, you're stepping into a different space. Like you don't want to be free. You want to, you want to be free in ways where you can spend time with them. Right. But do you ever. That's I'm, I'm definitely, you know, that's definitely part of the reason why I've been able to grow this. Like I have the past couple of years because my wife's been in grad school. And so, you know, I'm working a full-time job during the day. And then in the evenings, you know, when she's up studying on her thing, then that's when I have the time down, down here to be able to do my video stuff. And I guess that whole, th these two years have allowed me to up my learning and my process to be able to be really efficient so that, you know, when I do have kids and a family and the evenings are now taken up because I'm spending it with them when they're at school, you know, I could bust out a video in a couple hours or something and be able to hopefully still make the same content just in different spurts, I guess. Yeah. It's almost like Parkinson's law. Like it's like, uh, it's like water, like you're a level of efficiency molds to how much time you give it. So if you're like, dude, I got to make this banger right. player profile. If you give yourself six hours you, versus if you give yourself two hours. Right. And it's like, it goes back to your 80, 20 principle. Like if in, if a 10 hours to make a, a 10 minute video about Mitch Garver, but it's like maybe in 20 years, can you do four hours? And it's for sure basically just as good, but it, you saved six. And then you like those six hours, you like go to your kid's sporting event and you made dinner. Right. And it's like, dude, you're a beast. Yeah. Like you kill, like that's a lead. That's like the kind of life you want to live. And something that I do to myself intentionally sometimes is that, you know, if I start a player profile, sometimes it'll, I'll, I'll do that 10 hours over two days, but sometimes I'll, you know, it'll be six o'clock at night and I'll post on my story, like Mitch Garver player profile going live tomorrow morning. And I only have the intro done. So it's like, mm. so I force myself <laughs> to be like, all right, I'm getting it done tonight. I have to, because now I told everyone that I am. So then that's, those are the nights where I'm up until 2 AM making a video, but it's like, I do that s s to myself. Sometimes it's not the best thing, but that also, I set time limits on myself in that way to force myself to do things. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's the wazoo. That's wazoo life lesson paying off right yeah, there, dude. Right. Yeah. I, I'm dude, also a heavy dude. procrastinator, so there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I used to do that in college, but I would always do it the opposite. I would go to bed at 8 p.m. and I'd wake up at like 3 a.m. And then I'd be like, or 4 a.m. Yeah, I'm a night owl, okay. not a morning person, but I still yeah, get up so early. Yeah. I force myself to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a morning person, so I'd be like, that's I'd nice. wake up super early, rip a coffee, and be like, I have to get this done by my <laughs> 9 a.m. class. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's funny. Um, dang, dude. Yeah, this has been sick. I I really appreciate you um, we, uh, being able to like dive into just like different stuff too. Like, I know we could just jam out about podcasts and, and the YouTube channel, but yeah, the freedom thing is funky, man. I've I've been thinking about that a lot because. It's a, it's almost like Morgan Housel. He, the, he has that book, Psychology of Money. And he talks about, he's like, I just want to do what I want, uh, when I want with who I want. Exactly. Like that, that is freedom. And 
when you say it, it everyone's like, yeah, like I want that. But I think the, the other back end is like defining what it is you want. And then all like, I know like a big driver is like, dude, I want to be, I want more freedom. Like I want freedom to do what I want, blah, blah, blah. And then realizing you're like, well, right now is also the good old days. Like, like this is like, I am pretty free. Like I have a lot of control over, over my time. Like, yeah, I'm not a millionaire, but I do have some freedom. So for sure. I know it's, yeah, it's an interesting back and forth. Yeah. Hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just all the, it's not just, you know, growing a podcast or growing a YouTube channel. It's like all these different life lessons that you're learning along the way. And like I mentioned, it's like the deeper meanings behind everything. You're doing something for a deeper reason. Probably it's not just what you're showing on the surface, but yeah, it's really cool how intentional you are and with your thought process and being able to watch your mind work is, is really cool too. Hmm. Thanks, man. Yeah. I was going to say same for you. I think it's cool for, for you. It's like, you can go in so much into like pitch design and the Mariners and all of that. And like, I really appreciate just even in this conversation, like it's like the video, like I've watched all these videos on the Mariners, but then there's like you just being like, yeah, dude, this is why I'm doing it. And I know like, I've, I've gotten a, like maybe like an inside scoop on that because we've got to hang out in person or like you came to the basketball game and stuff like that. So it's like, it, I think it'd be cool even for people that follow your channel, like, oh man, this guy, like he did it because he loves the Mariners, which like you've touched on that in videos, but I really appreciate just like your vulnerability and, and like sharing that aspect of, cause it's like, yeah, it's the couch GM, but, and yeah, it's about the Mariners, but it's like, a lot, I think a lot of those people come back because of you. Not necessarily like, yeah, they want the Mariner, the information, but I mean, they could go on Twitter, they could do all those things. So right. like, I appreciate you g giving like the behind the scenes, yeah, uh, like the insight into the clubhouse of, of what's going on with, with you and, and how you're building out like your passion project. Cause like that, I mean, that's, that's what's driving the train. Yeah. And like I've said, this is just the start. And I mean, where it's going to go this next year is going to be absolutely insane. So I'm looking forward to the multiple podcasts that we'll have over this next year and being able to, I was going to say earlier, like both of us are going to have some pretty crazy, you know, biographies that we'll be writing in the next, you know, 10, 20 years. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I know it'd be sick. We'll have to do another pod here pretty soon. Like yeah. maybe a couple months into the, in the baseball season or, or an all-star break, we'll do a pod <laughs> recap of like where, where you've taken the channel, like where you're at how the half marathon went and like where we're progressing, like halfway through 2024. That'd be awesome. I was going to ask, like, maybe that's a good place to close it out is uh, like, what do you, what are you the most excited for, for just like building out your channel and the projects you're doing on is, is there like one thing that pops into your mind right now where you're like, I'm, do I'm doing that thing before the, before the all-star break. Well, so like up to this point, um, you know, I, I didn't necessarily like say this out loud to people, but it's just kind of one of my thought things to where it's like, I want to create enough quality content to where I don't have to reach out and ask people for things. It's like, they want to reach out to me. And I feel like I've finally have st started to tip that over to where hmm. like the guys from the Mariners just reached out to me. This is like something that I, and what I just said, that's kind of been one of my goals is like, I don't want to have to reach out now, now that he just reached out to me. So it's like in last year with my first access behind the scenes, you know, I introduced myself to a couple people, but you know, it's old media and new media. There was myself and one other YouTube channel that were there. We were the only new media. And so everyone's been, has known each other and been friends for 20, 30 years doing the same thing. And so like last year was just kind of standing on the sideline, doing my own thing by myself. And now I feel like that group of people, are recognizing who I am and seeing what I'm doing. And they're like, Hey, um, we should probably connect with this guy because you know, what he's doing is kind of cool. So it's just going to be really fun to see the difference from last year to this year. It was like mind blowing experience last year, but then this year it's going to be the same in different ways because, you know, I'll be doing the same stuff and more stuff, but it's just going to be a different dynamic that I'm looking forward to. So I guess just the, the progression this next year, like I've said, it's going to be, it's going to go crazy. I know that. And so I'm just looking, looking forward to enjoying the ride. Hell yeah. That's sick. Yeah, dude. It's 
I mean, it's cool even looking at it like like last year was your rookie season, dude. So you're sure. like, you're still figuring it out, you know. And then second year you come in and you have like a lot more context towards just like approaching it the same way as if you were an athlete or you're a first year coach or a first year GM. You know, it's like a lot of that first year is probably a lot more. Yeah, it's full of action, but you're also like observing. Right. You know, like how how does this work here? And now you're like coming in, you're like, oh, I'm seasoned. You know, <laughs> yeah. like. Like I got one under my belt. Let's get this thing. Yeah. So same, same question but, for you. What are you looking forward to this year? Oh man. Um, I would say the thing I'm the most excited about is the daily deposit newsletter. And I think that is really going to help like clear my thoughts and like set me up to have great conversations. So I think there's going to be a trickle down effect. If I, right now my my goal is to post every day in February, and then take it from there. So it's thirty. For try 30. to just have them be. What did you say? Thirty for thirty, or twenty eight for twenty eight, or twenty nine. Yeah, twenty nine this, this year. <laughs> yeah. So I think. Yeah. So the, the one thing I'm most excited about is the daily deposit newsletter, and then building that out. Where, like for me, there's so I've defined it. I have these like six buckets. So basically, it's podcasting, writing, connecting coaching, um, being curious, and then investing in my health. So I try to do like one thing for all those categories. And that doesn't mean that everyone else needs to do that. It's just like, I think writing about it and sharing how like I can invest in myself daily, just like the grounding thing, like, hey, I don't do it every day. I would love to does it do other people because I think this is cool. And three minutes isn't very long. And then it's like, cool, I think someone will resonate. Like, it's actually crazy how many people resonated with that. And I was like, really? Huh? Like I thought that I just thought this was cool. So I would say the number one thing is the daily deposit. I think being consistent 29 for 29 will really, really help me drive like better conversations within the podcast I'm doing. Cause I'm, I'm curious about like people's habits and decisions and actions that they take. So that's, but, but all that feeds back into like being really, really intentionally consistent with the podcast as well. So I, I know you asked one thing, but I would say the daily deposit newsletter and getting a hundred by my birthday. Those are, the, those are my two like locked in on that. What number are you at right now? Um, I believe I'm at 64. Oh yeah. You'll, you'll crush that. 65, 65. I have like 68 episodes recorded right now. Yeah, so I think this will be number 68 that. if I publish it correctly. Nice. Yeah. So we, we're good. I mean, <laughs> I know. I thought when I initially set a hundred in December, I was like, "Oh man!" And then I, I dropped like eight in December and eight in January, and was like, "Oh, okay." Then Feeling shoot, good. like, yeah, yeah. My first year, I recorded twenty four, and then in two months, I recorded sixteen. So I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> all right, dude. Like, I, you got this." So I mean, maybe we'll beat it. Maybe we'll go one twenty. But for right now, it's it's a hundred, and I'm gonna I'm gonna recalibrate May first and see if I need to set that goal a little bit higher just to push myself to the to the edge and, and get a little bit out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So. But awesome, man. Hell yeah, dude. Well, I'll make sure to, um, for, I'll make sure to put like everything in the show notes so people can check it out. I know I've been, I've been texting a bunch of people, your YouTube channel that check stuff out. And I know it's only going to ramp up with spring training and the Mariners making moves and, uh, the Mariners actually turning everything, uh, turning everything around this off season to be in a pretty good spot with, without spending much money. Yeah. Um, cause I, I know at one point, three months ago, everybody was like, burn the boats like, <laughs> yeah. like this team is this team is terrible and like sell the like owners need to sell right. and all that and i know we've turned a lot around so i'm excited to do you highlight something that uh the mariners are a tough relationship man they uh they're my favorite team and i've, I've loved them my entire life so um hoping for more mariner magic it'll be a fun year that's for sure yeah yeah it'll be dope yeah. but thanks again man i really appreciate you yeah thank you out to center. This is great. It's way back. It is gone.